This is Jenna Negan on iSurgeon Talks. And today I'm talking about retinal tears. This is a topic quite dear to my heart because as a retinal surgeon, I see a lot of retinal tears. And retinal tears um, cause problems that we need to do surgery for, things like retinal detachment. Now, retinal tears, usually this um, sort of thing will happen completely out of the blue for a patient. They'll be going about their normal life and all of a sudden they've got a rush of floaty bits in the eye. They may have some flashing lights in the eye and, and they're not quite sure what's going on. And then they'll go to their repetition or perhaps to an emergency eye clinic and be told that they have a retinal tear and that they need some urgent laser treatment. Now, that's the typical scenario. Sometimes, of course, we'll find retinal tears um, without having any other symptoms. So an incidental finding, a routine optician examination, they might find a tear. Um, and these ones may have been there a while. They just didn't produce any symptoms when they happened. Now, the treatment for retinal tears, and we have discussed before on the channel, um, and essentially it's laser treatment, sometimes freezing treatment. Um, it's done in the clinic setting, it's not an operation, um, and it's very, very successful in reducing the likelihood of retinal detachment afterwards, and usually goes very, very smoothly. Um, I specifically wanted to talk about um, the kind of uh, advice uh, patients get when they get either a PVD, posterior vitreous detachment, which is the age-related change in the jelly of the eye um, that causes retinal tears, or if they get a retinal tear itself and have laser treatment for it. There's a lot of conflicting advice out there regarding this. And certainly, um, there's a lot of tendency um, for opticians and for doctors also to advise you sort of complete rest, avoiding any kind of exercise or movement, not moving your head and various things like this. And I just wanted to challenge that a little bit um, because I think it is quite limiting for patients to be told that here you are, you're absolutely fine and well one moment and then all of a sudden you can't move, you can't walk around, you can't do anything, you have to sit there and be petrified for your vision. And I really don't think that's necessary. Um, we didn't know very much about the etiology, about the, the cause of retinal tears um, years ago. But more and more has become known over the last few decades. Um, and we know that retinal tears are due to uh, the movement of the jelly inside the eye. And the movement of the jelly is inevitable. Um, it happens in all of us at some point in life. And you can't uh, sort of uh, make it happen. Certain things make it more likely to happen, um, things like injuries to the eye itself, um, and sometimes other things like uh, inflammation. But ultimately, it's going to happen when it happens. And um, limiting your activities afterwards really doesn't make very much sense. Um, certainly, things like lifting heavy objects, bending or straining, will not have any effect on the eye whatsoever. Uh, activities like that that raise the pressure and that cause you to strain, um, like sneezing, coughing, lifting heavy things, they do um, increase your blood pressure and the blood pressure spike can cause some bleeding. Uh, just like sometimes, you know, if you um, have a heavy coughing kit, sometimes you have a little bleed on the surface of the eye from a little blood vessel bursting. And um, so a similar thing can happen inside the eye. You can have a little bleed in the retina and we call that Valsalva retinopathy. Um, it can sometimes reduce your vision, but usually it's just something we notice if we examine your eye and you will not necessarily have symptoms. Now that can certainly happen, but that is an entirely separate and different process to developing a retinal tear and to developing a posterior vitreous detachment, the age-related change in the jelly of the eye that is unaffected in any way by coughing, straining, or lifting heavy things. And so you really don't need to worry um, about these aspects after being diagnosed with a PVD or retinal tear. How about uh, physical activity? Well, again, it's not something that's going to make uh, your PVD happen, and it's not something that's going to cause other tears to happen. 
um, because it's changes inside the eye that cause that. And you moving around doesn't affect that very much. Um, activities with sudden acceleration and deceleration, so for example, going on a roller coaster or going bungee jumping, they can cause a sort of sudden shifts of the position of the jelly inside the eye. And that could potentially um, lead to problems uh, and encourage retinal tears, and because it's that sudden momentum change of the jelly that causes a, a, um, a tug on the retina. We can't really estimate um, what likelihood that is, um, but it's something that you can sort of visualize conceptually could happen. But normal daily activities, going out for a walk, going for a jog, um, you know, even going to the gym where you're not going to be doing anything sort of too dramatic um, is certainly absolutely fine. Um, and if it involves lifting, that's also fine. Um, and this is something that I think is important on a different level as well. Because if you um, go from your completely normal life to suddenly there's great restriction, it puts you in a very um, sort of different frame of mind. It makes you feel like you're unwell, that there's something wrong. Um, and it, it produces a lot of anxiety, I think. And I think it's anxiety that's not very necessary because the vast majority of uh, retinal tears are very quickly and effectively treated and you can forget all about the fact that you've had them. Uh, and a PVD, the age-related jelly change, well, everyone's going to get that, so it's certainly not um, a disease um, or an illness uh, that you should feel bad about. It's just the natural part of aging, which happens to all of us. And so I think reframing your thinking um, is helped by not restricting yourself in this manner and thinking, well, this is just one of those things that happens, we'll get on with life and, and we won't sort of um, be over anxious about the outcomes.